Sakurai san, thank you for very much for this interview. No, 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 no. Yeah. thank you. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I actually want to get started with the very beginning of your career. You were a student at Tokyo University, and it was then when you started working on Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. Sure. Yes. And how did, how did they find you? Did you apply to become a screenwriter there, or did somebody on Production IG staff find you first? No, my, my, actually, my professor at my university was an acquaintance of uh, yeah. the president mm -hmm. of IG, and uh, he was like, uh, his major was media environment, future oh, media right. environment and things like that. And I was, I, I was interested in those things as well, future political situation, economical situation, social issues that we might face in the future. I see. So um, he introduced me to Ishikawa-san, who's the president of IG, right. and uh, I was called to one of uh, the, the first meeting of Ghost in the Shell series, uh, Sound Complex. It wasn't called Sound Complex at that time. Oh. We just called it K3, which... K3. K, K stands for Kokaku Kidotai, which is the Ghost in the Shell type, Japanese type. Mm -hmm. we, and the K2 refers to the uh, innocence goes to the show too, oh, which we, we, we had s right. two different separate lines making mo the mo one the movie and another one the yeah. series. Right. So we were the K three team. I see. So I, I met Kamiyama san the director and then producer at that time and then yes yeah, so I was giving ideas for those future media environment right. things. That that's how I got involved. Wow. K1, I guess, would be the first film? That, 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 yeah, that, the first Ghost in the Shell film. Yeah. Released in 95, yeah. I see. And so, basically, I heard that your thesis actually won quite a lot of awards, your media environment thesis. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that thesis, thesis was about? Yeah, it, was, yeah it, was, it, 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 it involved uh, Ghost in the Shell, actually. And, uh, wow. Ghost in the Shell, oh, Ghost in the Shell, 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 so you infer that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say English translation yeah. term term for it. It's called Denno, the cyber brains. They had cyber brains. Directly to the electronic brains, yeah. Electronic brain connected yeah. with everything. Right. Yeah. This, did you read a lot of cyberpunk literature about that by any chance? Like any of the great novels by William Gibson or uh, no actually I, I was I was not really uh, I wasn't a really a big fan of anime. Mm -hmm. uh, neither was I uh, good at uh, uh, sci-fi things I see uh, but that was uh, made something probably the director found it was interesting because I was I knew I didn't know very much about sci-fi things and I didn't know I knew even uh, I didn't know anything about uh, animation but I knew quite a lot about like political right. uh, books or economic books or social Right, yeah. Politics, economy aspects yeah. Yeah. that they use yeah. in the series. Yeah. Right, you, your degree is actually in economics as yeah. well. Yeah. So that's so. How did you uh, put that into your writing? Like, how does that? How did that figure into it? Other than maybe some of the more direct references. Like, you know? um, I, I thought it was because uh, when you, I was originally I intended I intended to become a scholar. I see. Stay right. at my university, uh -huh. but um, but you know. As a scholar, you have to write these theses. Or a really, they, they have really strict rules on on uh, when you quote something or uh, when, when you. Yes, it's, it has really, really strict rules and regulations, and um, I was kind of fed up with that. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to say what I wanted to say, uh, but, uh, but. Well, yeah, screenplay did have all these kind of uh, equations, and actually, they have rules. When, when they, when something bad happens, then at the end, something good has to happen because that's the, that's the way a drama is right. made. Yeah, yeah, up and down. It's yeah. an arc, yeah. right? It's a little so, bit so, of a flow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, but but it was more for me. It was more free, and it was more uh, 
I could make I, I could make them say what I want to say. Right. Yeah. Right. So so you, that's yeah. what I did for Tachikoma, the, the robot character right. as well. I was oh. for my graduate school. I was writing the uh, a thesis on the relationship between human beings and the robots. So, but then I had to do all sorts of experiments, and I had to do all sorts of rules and regulations and things, and I wasn't able to say what I really wanted to say. So I made Tachikoma say what I wanted to say. Ah, I see. I remember it, actually. <laughs> the Tachikomas were very philosophical in yeah. that series, and I remember there was an entire episode that was basically them dialoguing mm -hmm. about the mind-body problem, I think, if I recall. That was actually, like, yeah. my uh, another version of my thesis. Uh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to say that, uh, yeah, yeah, making robot close to human beings is, is not something that's going to happen. It would probably be the other way around. Ah, I see. We're going to be more like, we would talk more like robots. Oh, I see. Right. Because that would, that would make things easier for us, you know? Like when you do the programming, mm -hmm. that, that's like talking in the computer manner. Right. Yes. It's not the way we talk, right? Mm -hmm. like yeah. We adapt ourselves to the way they act. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm a programmer myself. I oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm a programmer. It's, uh, okay. Computer languages are very limited. They're very logical, but they're very limited vocabulary set. Yeah. Oh. And it has its own grammar, basically. Yeah. And exactly. yeah, I exactly. have to adjust my mind yeah. in order to actually make a program exactly. work. Wow. It, it, yeah. it works like that. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I guess you've probably heard of somebody named Ray Kurzweil before, and he talked about the singularity, which is the day that artificial intelligence becomes self-aware. That's something, of course, that is broached and goes to the show pretty often. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that idea. So do you actually think that may be possible one day? or the, My thought is that if it is, there is a test called, a famous test called uh, Turing, the Turing test. test. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the idea of Turing test is that if a robot or an AI starts to think and it becomes aware of its being, mm -hmm. even if it, if it does, yeah. but how can we tell? Right. Because then he might say that, well, I'm self-aware of myself. I'm thinking about my personality, philosophically. But that might be a program itself. Mm -hmm. But then it's the other way around also. But when we say that we are self-conscious of ourselves, then... Is that really true, or is that is that something where we've learned from books, mm -hmm. or that might, yeah. then we might be copying ourselves, yeah. and which is not, which doesn't make us any different from the programs that might be repeating themselves. Right. So, well, the so definition the definition of yeah, self-consciousness yeah, is actually right. Right. we're not yeah, yeah. sort of. Right. We haven't defined it right. yet. Right. <laughs> exactly. We haven't defined it for right. forever. <laughs> yeah, that's an ongoing debate in eternal, philosophy. Eternal theme. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's very interesting because recently a chatbot that was posing as a Ukrainian teenager was declared to have won the Turing test. And, mm -hmm. But there's a lot of skepticism about that because, yeah. you know, if you have to be so specific and you only fool like 30%, of the people that that's actually a human being is that really a you know a meaningful mm -hmm. gauge necessarily and yeah that just goes back to you know how much of our subconsciousness is really yeah. intentional in a way and in such a way that can't be imitated you do seem like a very scholarly person who has thought about all these things and we talked to Kamiyama about four years ago and he strikes me as being a very similar kind of person and so did you guys have a lot of discussions about these sorts of ideas like as you were working with yes. him and yes so I, I think yeah. those are those, these are, these things are the, are the elements that he found interesting about me. I think mm -hmm. so. Uh, he's the one who picked me. Up. I was just giving ideas for. for it, was, it was a voluntary thing. Right. But after mm -hmm. half a year of these meetings, uh, repeated meetings, I, I I told him that I would quit because I had to, I had to go back to 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 graduate and go on to the doctor course of my university. And then he said. But since you've given so much ideas for the series, why not write an episode? Mm. Why don't write a screenplay? <laughs> and then that was Tachikoma's episode. That was Tachikoma going out with a girl mm -hmm. looking for her lost dog. That's right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. 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 That was my first screenplay. And he liked that. Wow. So, and he made me, uh, he asked me to write another one, another screenplay, which was about episode three, which is uh, about. Uh, a girl, a girl Android, mm -hmm. and his her boyfriend 
destroy all the other androids because he wanted her girlfriend to be just one. Right. Uh, yeah. Unique. 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 Yeah. One and only. Mm. And the dialogues they are talking uh, to one another is actually all quotes from uh, Jean Luc Godard's film. Jean Luc Godard. Godard. Which Godard. film? Which film? I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure about the English title. If the French one is Abu Asufa. Abu Asufa. Oh yeah, that's uh, Breathless. 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 That's his yes. first oh, major film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Breathless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's an excellent film. Yeah, 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 I saw that a while ago. And oh, yeah. it's, uh, so we, as we yeah. go along the story, we think that they're actually com- having conversation, uh, a romantic conversation, and, and right. at the end, Togusa, one of the characters, finds out that it's actually Quotations. oh, it all comes from the film. Right. But the one last phrase that this girl android says is not from the film, which makes us think that has she is, was her, was that her original line, or did she take that from another movie? Uh, did you watch the recent movie called Her? Yes, I, I did actually on my way to uh-huh. San Francisco, uh, to Los Angeles yeah. on the plane. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of that actually, guys? That sounds very relevant to some of these themes. I thought that, well, forgive me for saying this, but I thought it was kind of old mm. for us. It's, mm. the, it's a very popular thing that we Japanese animation really like to tell. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought that I, I, I saw, I watched this kind of movie like more than a hundred times. Mm. But, but still, I think it was a, a, a very well made movie mm-hmm. because. It's remade into something very modern and popular. I, I, I thought when I saw Ma- The Matrix, right. I thought it was another version of The Ghost in the Shell right. in, in its appearance. Right, especially the opening credits, yeah. Yeah, and all these cyber brain uh-huh. things and all the yeah. fighting things. Uh-huh. Right. And her was something I, I also thought that derives from... Uh, the Ghost in the Shell. The theme is yeah. very much the theme of the Puppet Master. That's right. It's The ending was awfully similar. I thought, you know, they, the, 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 the AIs become all self-aware and they go off into the distance. You know? The net is vast and infinite, as they say. You know? The Ghost in the Shell is, it doesn't look like that, but it's, it's another theme is it's the love story between Motoko and the Puppet Master, the, the program. Mm-hmm. And she starts to, she, she chooses to go to unite with the network, That's right. which is like marrying an AI. Ah. Yeah, so she shares the network together with program 2500, yeah. So, yeah, so so it was very much like the theme of Ghost in the Shell, but it's told in a more of a, a romantic context. Yes. It's, it's more of a dramatical ro- romance drama rather than sci-fi Sci-fi. police action Uh, (laughs) right exactly (laughs) I thought it was a surprisingly anime-ish kind of movie yes yeah yeah, we thought it the same way we thought I've I've had this conversation with Kamiyama-san the other day because he was and we we thought that it was very anime-ish and it's almost like Ghost in the Shell but it's it's done in a more sophisticated manner because not very many people watch Ghost in the Shell and think that it's a romantic movie. Brain <laughs> 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 spilling out. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. You actually, you also worked, it seems, on the Evangelion remake movies. Can you talk a little bit about your involvement with that? I well, um, in my Japanese Wikipedia it says um, we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah a little yeah, bit. Okay. It's okay. Right. Yeah, this will be the. Yeah. yeah, I want to talk about the, the, my latest movie too, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I wasn't much involved. In my Japanese Wikipedia, it says that I've written the, the basic screenplay for that, but I actually didn't. Ah. I was, I was, I, I, I participated in meetings, but I, um, I was only eating potato chips. <laughs> okay. That's the only thing. I, I was, that's the only thing I did. <laughs> and uh, Anno San, the director himself, wrote the screenplay as far as I know. So. Um, didn't you delete that and then someone else put it back in? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, I was so embarrassed about, like, you know, it's written on my Wikipedia, so... Um, uh-huh. yeah. It's not, it's like me who's saying that, yeah. so I deleted that, but then, mm-hmm. like, two days later, 
Somebody put it back again. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> wow, I see. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about your latest project? Thank you, you so, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Before I leave, uh, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, a movie called the, uh, Giovanni's Island. It's Giovanni's Island. Yes. Yes. It, we yes. did a screening yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was happy because uh, the the. Uh, the place was filled with people. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I was worried actually because uh, if only like a few people <laughs> came up, then yeah. it would be it would be really bad. But um, fortunately, the, the place was pretty much filled, and um, people seemed to like it a mm -hmm. lot. And I'm really uh, desperately struggling for a U.S. release here. Okay. It's released in France now mm -hmm. because it won a prize. At Annecy, right? It won't mention the jury. Uh, jury distinction, I think it's all in English. But um, uh, the the distribution went really big. Uh, we started with forty eight screens in France, but now it's two hundred and fifty. Wow! And now um, we're gonna release this in UK mm -hmm. from October, and also in Korea, which is surprising to us because it's a post war movie and. We didn't expect Korea would be interested in that kind of Japanese oh, hardships oh, during yeah. the war. Yeah. And also, ca Korean characters appear in the movie also. Mm -hmm. We did the voice dubbing in Korea wow. and also in Moscow, Russia, mm -hmm. wow. because it's a story about Japanese children and Russian children in general. So it's, uh, it's about the Northern Ireland occupied by the Russians. Ah, uh, Sakhalin Island, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sakhalin and uh, both, uh, Shikotan Alice, both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's something, it's not a sci fi movie, it's a decent movie. It's <laughs> okay. rated R. <laughs> and uh, it's a, I think it's a, it's a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a very global theme. I can see that. Yeah, it's it's, it's that, an international, yeah. and all the staffs are international. The background artist is from, he's an Argentinian mm -hmm. who lives now in Lille. France, oh. north of Paris, uh, Lille, and um, in between us, many of the in between us were from Korea, mm -hmm. so, and um, in China also. Mm -hmm. So, um, so all talents from the world mm -hmm. sort of gathered to make this movie. Do you think that's actually going to be the future of animation in a way, just more I, international collaboration like that? I really do. I really do because yeah. it's we are kind of. I kind of feel that sometimes that we're repeating ourselves mm -hmm. again with the same kind of artists, same kind of background artists, same kind of designs again and again. And then when we have Santiago, he's called Santiago, the background artist, mm -hmm. when he, he joined us for this project, uh, his background was outstanding and it was something that we never we never sort of experienced in the, in the past Japanese movies. Right. I and mean, it's very new. And an interesting thing is that, um, ah, this is another interesting. Um, he said that it was not, we, we call that Santiago style because it was very new and it was not very much like anime. Mm -hmm. But he, he called it anime style, actually. Oh, uh, right. he, he called it, uh, well, he called it ukiyo-e style. Oh, ukiyo-e, like woodblocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woodblocks. R woodblock prints, woodblock, yeah. yeah. He, he called it ukiyo-e style. I mean, he's, he, he thought that it was something that came from Japan, actually, uh -huh. which actually we were not aware of. Uh, and uh, it was an interesting thing. We thought it was his idea, and he was thinking oh, it was Japan, Jap old yeah. Japanese. Yeah. 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 You're right, and it's, so it's, it's almost like it's coming back onto itself as a way, you know, mm -hmm. like if Japanese influence sort of goes all over the world and it comes back kind of refracted a little bit right, and right. it's almost like this cycle as it were, you know, and right, that's right. this kind of whole global exchange. Yeah, that's and he has a strong respect towards Van Gogh, the painter. Oh, yeah. So Van Gogh is also like a very fond of Japanese yeah. Ukiyo-e and yeah. then, Ukiyo yeah, he, uh, yeah. Post impressionism. That's right, post impressionism. Yeah. Well, I think that's actually, that's good. And okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, you so were much. a real pleasure yeah. to talk to you, sir. Yeah.